Welcome everybody, I'm Audrey and today I'm going to be talking a bit about the science of light, including how to bend light and how to use light to see backwards in time. Let's start with seeing backwards in time. The first thing we need to know is that light travels from one place to another. So for example, if I turn on this flashlight, the light travels from the flashlight to my hand, as you can see here. Now it might not seem like it travels because it seems almost instantaneous that the light reaches my hand. But in reality, that's just because light travels so incredibly fast at a speed of 186,287 miles per second. That's like running about 745,000 laps around the track in a single second. Crazy fast. But what about light sources that are a lot farther away from us? Like the sun, for example. As you know, the Earth gets its light from the sun, but they're really, really big distances apart. And because of that, even though the light is traveling super, super fast, it actually still takes a little over eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach the Earth. So any natural light you're seeing around you right now actually took about eight minutes to get here. And what about objects that are even farther away from us, like distant stars and galaxies and nebulas? Take this one, for example. This picture was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And this little fuzzy dot right here is a galaxy. It's so far away, 13.3 billion light years away. That means it takes 13.3 billion years for the light from that galaxy to reach our eyes here on Earth. Now, because that light took 13.3 billion years to get here, when we see that light, when we use that light to see that image, we're actually looking at that galaxy as it existed 13.3 billion years ago. And in that way, we're looking back in time. Now that we know that light travels, we can move on to how to bend light. Now you might've actually seen a lot of different examples in your daily life of light bending without even knowing it. Take this example where the straw in a glass of water looks broken, as you can see here, when in reality, the straw is perfectly normal. This happens because this plastic cup and the water in it are a lot thicker than the air around us. So when the light goes from traveling through that thin air into the thicker materials of the plastic and water, it slows down a little bit. And as it slows down, it causes its path to change and causes the light to bend, which causes this distortion in the image that we see. Now, we can even use this simple cup to bend light so much that we can make an arrow, see here, change direction. Just watch. As you can see, the arrow is now going the opposite way. So let's take another example. This here is a prism. It's made out of crystal, which again is thicker than air. What do you think would happen if we had light pass through this prism? As you can see, as the light passes through the prism, it slows down a little bit. And that causes us to be able to see the colors of the rainbow here on this pole. That's because each color bends slightly differently as it passes through the prism, making the colors separate out and allowing us to see all of them at once. This prism experiment is actually a good demonstration of another real life phenomena of bending light that we see, which is rainbows. As you know, for a rainbow to happen, it has to be both sunny and raining. That's because our white light or natural light that we generally see around us passes through the raindrop. This raindrop is made of water. So just like in our cup experiment, the light slows down and bends. And just like in our prism experiment, this causes the different colors of the rainbow to bend slightly differently, separating them out and creating the rainbow that we see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an awesome summer and we'll see you soon.